Hello, everyone. Uh, we are going to take one step further in success uh, as a potential. And uh, so far, I was talking about the importance of your IQ, also of relative happiness. Then there was a, a, uh, an episode on the, probably the most important ingredient, which is industriousness and endurance. And then there was an, a separate episode on vision, whether or not you have a vision, which is also very relevant if you want to be successful, because you need to have a vision that you are projecting out to the outer world. And uh, today I'm going to combine two things, again, which doesn't, they don't really look the same. Uh, they're not the same actually, but they are very much linked to each other. And the, uh, the first thing is belief which is the most important ingredient in magic. If you want to do any magical work and you want, uh, you want to uh, uh, make a ceremony or um, to do practical magic, your belief in the process is paramount. So belief is a, 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 a trust in yourself or trust in God or trust in the, the divine is very important. And your belief that yes, you can you can actually manage uh, whatever you would like to is very important, but at the same time, to have an aim is also very important. So uh, without the aim, without an aim, what you actually would like to achieve, there is no uh, potential at all. And um, again, uh, let's take a look at the um, the numerology and the empty and uh, full plane. So here's the Pythagorean tablet. And as I probably already mentioned, Pythagoras um, had to somehow rectify the discrepancy between the fact that there are seven visible planets and nine basic numbers. And the way he did it, he assigned seven numbers to the seven planetary archetype. And then he picked up uh, four and seven and gave them energy patterns. So here are the planes, by the way. One, four, seven is the physical pla plane, two, five, eight is the emotional plane, and three, six, nine is the mental plane. The reason I put, didn't put here uh, two and six is because they, uh, they are not taking uh, a look at the whole Pythagorean tablet. Uh, we simply want to see these planes that all uh, join at the, uh, at the number, at the position of number seven. So the 147 is the physical plane. And if you have it as a full plane, you have one and four and seven in your numeroscope, then you are very practical. You, you are down to earth. You can do whatever you need to do on the earth plane. If you have three, five, seven, this is the vision plane. Uh, you start with an idea, you, you, uh, let it across your heart, your your um, emotions, and you take it down to the earth plane in the future in seven. And we haven't spoken about the seven, eight, nine. This is a future plane. When empty, it also means uh, it could be determination or it could be um, uh, timelessness. When it's timelessness, then you are totally washed out, uh, washed away by by uh, not being able to stay in a uh, position and not not regarding time at all and when working properly it gives you a set of determinants like I'm going to do this I'm going to be successful but it also uh, these three numbers as they are the three last numbers in the in the uh, uh, sequence of numbers uh, represent the three divine virtues seven is faith uh, or belief, eight is uh, hope, and nine is love. So uh, if you ha I have any of these planes that either terminate in number seven or start with number seven, so it's quite interesting because if you consider this, uh, on the physical plane, you start an idea, you are industrious, number four, and then you achieve it because you believe it, you have faith in your action. Uh, with the vision plane, you have an idea in your head, 
you make it cr uh, cross your uh, uh, your your psyche or your heart, and then you you uh, you accomplish it in the future. And uh, with seven, eight, nine, you you be just because you have faith and hope, you can achieve love. So this is what it is. Quite interesting because uh, I have all the numbers except for seven. That's another important piece of information. If you uh, if you uh, put all your numbers into your numeroscope and you you simply just put enter all the numbers that are that are in your birth date of birth, and then you add uh, the full uh, date up, and you will get a double digit number, which is your destiny path. And then you uh, add it up, uh, reduce it to a, a single digit number, and that's going to be your destiny number. And you enter those as well into the, your numeroscope. And then you will see whether you whether or not you have an, a, an empty slot. Uh, and those are life uh, tasks you need to accomplish whatever is related to that number. So I, I don't have a seven. I have everything else. I don't have a seven in my numeroscope. So what did I do? I had faith. I started to have faith uh, in in the stuff that I wanted to do. Uh, if you don't have faith, uh, it's very very difficult to have to have anything uh, successful in your life. You need to have faith in order to be successful. And if you don't have this, if you don't believe in yourself, in, if you don't believe in what you are uh, actually uh, accomplishing, you won't accomplish it at all. So that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is aim. And uh, I don't know whether you are familiar with the, the works of uh, Carl Jung, uh, the psychoanalyst, who actually is the father of psychoanalysis. And uh, he had some very interesting ideas. He is very, very difficult to read. Most of the people who, who claim that they know him quite well, know him secondhand, um, People are talking about him all the time, but I don't really think that too many people read him because he's very difficult to read and understand. And it requires a lot of energy and effort and time and, and consideration for you to go through it because every sentence contains something either very relevant or something that you need to think through because otherwise you don't know what it means. And he, he believed uh, that it's 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 almost it's almost as if he believed in reincarnation really i mean i'm sure he he believed in reincarnation he definitely believed in the human psyche and he definitely believed in timelessness in a way and that's why i think that he he even probably had glimpses of uh, of the higher dimensions because what he had this idea that if you determine something now you can actually project it out to the future and your future, you, you can establish a future self who already accomplished whatever you are yearning for now. And you can project it out there to that future self who then, this is the idea, who can then actually project it back to you with the tools or necessary things by which you can achieve it easier. So it's, it's really a brilliant idea that uh, you can actually select a, a future self and you can address that future self who can actually help you to achieve whatever you want. Now, this idea uh, is linked to the higher self or the signature. I'm, I'm sure you know how to uh, calculate the signature. You take the uh, uh, the um, planets that rule uh, signs in your chart. You you uh, um, you calculate how how many uh, you know what's the highest number in um, in modalities and in in um, uh, elements. For instance, in my case, it's cardinal fire. What is cardinal fire? Aries. So my higher self is Aries. And then once you calculated this, you take the uh, the planets into consideration only, and uh, and add uh, 
one point or half a point for the south node because that is your instinctual behavior. And also, uh, for instance, in, in the karmic astrology, we, each sign is ruled by a separate planet or centaur. Uh, so uh, we have actually 12 uh, of those uh, rulers. You can add your ascendant and you can add uh, your uh, south node to the calculation and then you will arrive at a an energy pattern and that is your higher self that is your guardian angel that is a portion of you that is up there remain up there in the dimension portal and is actually helping you by sending you dreams premonitions messages signs all the time uh, and the, uh, the it, it depends on how how well you have established a connection with this higher self, whether you are actually paying attention to what uh, it, it is messaging you or whether you are completely disregarding these messages. The, uh, if you have uh, uh, the same sign, I mean, your higher self is in the same sign, like your ascendant, your, your moon, your south node, th those are the strongest connections. Uh, if your higher self is in the same sign as your chart ruler or your sun, that's also very important. Uh, a stallion may help. Uh, all the rest is not very helpful. To tell you the truth, you can calculate it. You can see how well uh, this connection is established. The better connection you have with your higher self, the more you can actually project yourself out there in the future. You can see your, your, your future um, your future you who can actually go back to you and send you messages what to do how to achieve success so that's a brilliant idea uh, as i was uh, contemplating this and uh, also the fact that you need to aim and in order that uh, to to you need to have an aim and you need to be able to to shoot an arrow towards that, that aim i realized that there are two uh, two figures with uh, bows and arrows in the sky. One is Orion and the other one is Sagittarius. And both bows and arrows are actually on the Milky Way. Why is this important? Because uh, the ecliptic is the hero pathway. So it's the, the pathway where uh, the hero is uh, treating on uh, where you have your experiences, your adventures, and uh, that's 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 our pathway. Let's put it this way: human, the human pathway. But then the Milky Way, in every every people's legends and myths, uh, uh, describes the the home of gods and goddesses. It's the the um, the pathway of the gods, and wherever this uh, these two are linked. That is where we can join the uh, the higher uh, dimensions, the higher energies. And um, I found two pictures. This is Sagittarius, the constellation Sagittarius, and this is the Milky Way. And this is the portion of Sagittarius. This is his lower uh, horse body, and this is the upper human human body. And this is actually the uh, the, the bow and arrow and it aims at the Milky Way. And then uh, here, here's Orion. This is a uh, Be uh, Beetlejuice, Bellatrix, Rigel, um, and the, the um, uh, belt stars, uh, Alnilam, Alnitak, and Mintaka, and this is the sword. And here's his arrow, here's his bow and arrow. And again, the bow is lifting up the Milky Way. So our ancestors knew it perfectly well how important it is to have an aim, to be able to carry a bow and arrow, and to be able to use that arrow to reach that aim. With the arrow, you establish a connection between yourself, your physical body, and the future aim. And this, these are signified by these two constellations in bows and arrows. Um, so we reach another episode of success. This was about faith or belief in your stuff and to have an aim in, uh, which actually uh, can help you to achieve what you really want. But for that, you need to know what you really want. And this aim 
can be achieved by your future self by, by establishing your highest potential out there. And if you project that highest potential of yourself out there, then uh, there is a hope that you're actually going to achieve it at some point in the future. And at, at that point, this future existence that of yourself can actually relate back to you, to this portion of you that is in the here and now. And it's much easier then to achieve what you really would like to achieve. So that's another important ingredient, uh, ingredient of in uh, this, the story of success which is going to continue. And I also, uh, um, I, I'm preparing an episode on what is hindering success. So what are the main reasons uh, for uh, becoming unsuccessful? I think that will be, will be also uh, important to tackle. Thank you for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>